All right, so where are we at with the NFL facilities, practice facilities opening up? Um, are, are players allowed to actually go out there and, and, you know, practice, or are they only there for treatment? Are coaches allowed? Where do they stand there? Well, we saw some of the coaches return to the facility last week, and, and of course, it's up to local and state laws in, in right. terms of how the COVID-19 situation is working locally. But I, I think the good news is that we've actually taken that step. And, and I think, uh, you know, people are wearing masks, people are social distancing. We, we read the, the news where the locker rooms during training camp have to be six feet apart, which is a concern because typically you have 90 people on a roster trying to make a roster, a 53-man roster, in, in August. Mm-hmm. So that's a logistical hurdle they're going to have to clear. And, and yeah, I was going to say, how are they going to jam yet. all those guys in there? Exactly, and, and that's a legitimate concern. And, and I will say this. We dunk on the NFL about a lot of things. They, they seem to have a plan uh, throughout the entire process about where they want to go and how they hope to get there. We'll, we'll see if it continues. Fingers crossed it does. But it started with the draft. Folks didn't want to have the draft. Goodell pushed it through. It actually turned out to be the right thing. And now they're coming out with plans each week, each every few weeks, about, okay, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to get there. And the, the bigger issue is that this thing is so fluid that things change nationally where we are with COVID-19, then the NFL has to react to that. So, yeah, those are those are the issues. Uh, I do applaud the NFL for, for actually being ahead of the issues, at least trying to be more so than, than certainly Major League Baseball, for example. Joined by Ryan Wilson from CBSSports.com, covers the NFL for them. What's your best bet as to what NFL stadiums are going to look like this fall? Do you think quarter full, half full? What do you think the, the crowds are going to look like? in a few months. That's another interesting issue, sort of following on the heels of how many people can you have in the locker room. So if you separate people by two or three seats, I, I can imagine you, you get a third full, uh, a quarter full to start and see how it goes. Uh, we know in Europe where they're playing soccer right now, there are no fans, but they're piping in crowd noise, which is, you know, what the cults used to always do. They see a, a dumb anyway. Uh, but, but then the, uh, another logistical issue, okay, let's say let's start with a quarter full. We'll, we'll start doing that the first week of the season. Then you have to have uh, whatever, let's see, uh, I've got to do the math here, 20,000 people line up outside of a stadium six feet apart. Now, how long does it take to get them in? How long does it take to get them out? And, and those are the, the sort of hurdles you're dealing with. But, but listen, um, I think NASCAR is going to have a, an event in a few weeks with people there, and those will be trial runs. We'll see how these things go, but, but I think – we're going to have a situation where fans will be in the stands at some point, uh, barring, of course, in, in, any upticks in, in, in COVID-19 cases and, and all the qualifiers to go along with it. I noticed that, uh, just getting back to football for a second, you had uh, Chase Young pretty high. How could you not, right? Most people, I think by most accounts, best player in the draft, but because he's not a quarterback, they didn't go one. Um, is he your odds-on favorite for rookie of the year? Yeah, uh, he is. He was my favorite player in the draft too. In terms of being a slam dunk, there are some unknowns to Joe Burrow, but you take him because he's a quarterback, like you said. Right. But Chase Young is a grown man, and and much the same way that Nick Bosa a year ago came in and just dominated. I, I think that Chase Young is going to do that. And you guys know this: the, the uh, front line for the front seven for for Washington is pretty good, and especially mm-hmm. the defensive line. So we don't talk enough about that because we're worried about Dwayne Haskins and what Ron Rivera is going to do. But I think Chase Young benefits from being on a defensive line where he doesn't have to do all the work, much like Nick Bosa in San Francisco. So if you told me Chase Young gets nine or ten sacks, I said I would say, yeah, that sounds about right. I, I think he's going to dominate. I actually think he's a little bit better than Nick Bosa is at this point in his career, and which means uh, he'll probably only get a lot better. So, uh, yeah, sign me up for nine sacks, and uh, I think rookie of the year makes a ton of sense. Ryan, I saw that you recently wrote – about the all-time five, your franchise five for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And I thought it was interesting, and you can talk about this. You have Ben Roethlisberger in there, not Terry Bradshaw. Yeah, this is a point of contention with me and my colleagues because the rules were such – the rules, I, I didn't write these rules. That you could only have one quarterback, and then you had to go with three other players, and then you had to go with a coach. Oh. So then the one quarterback math becomes, okay, uh, Big Ben or Terry Bradshaw who, who won – for Super Bowls, and, you know, unfairly, admittedly, we always consider the guys that, that we're familiar with and, and play. In this case, Big Ben play is the reason that offense goes after his first few years. Terry Bradshaw was part of a team and part of an era where running the ball was, was incredibly important. 
And, and I say that as uh, Danny Cannell, my other co- my colleague who covered who did the Colts, he took Johnny Unanis over Pey- Peyton Manning. So that's the other side of the coin. And wow. as you might imagine, I know people were not happy about that. <laughs> Plenty of people were like, okay, Danny's clearly smoking something. But uh, that's why we rolled with uh, uh, me and my, my colleague, Brian Diard, to roll with, with Big Ben. And um, I could understand arguments on both sides. You know, uh, our colleague, Grant Paulson, he and his uh... – his partner, they did a, a draft or they kind of a ranking rather of the Skins roster yesterday, and I looked at it and I'm a Skins fan, mm-hmm. uh, unabashed, not a journalist, just a fan, and he ranked their players right? right, and they came up with Terry McLaurin one, Chase Young two. I mean, who knows where that is? But then, man, I I looked at it and I went, if our number three best player is Matt Ioannidis and I like him, right, <laughs> we're in trouble. How's we're in, the, we're in deep yeah. trouble. If where where was Haskins? They weren't even in the top ten. Yeah, when so, your quarterback's not in the top ten of best players in your roster, you are in trouble. I mean, it, it, they went McLaurin, Young, Ioannidis, Payne, Allen, Landon Collins, Kendall Fuller, seven. Kendall Fuller's your seventh best player. On I mean, man, this see, I, I was kind that? of ca- cautiously optimistic. I thought we could win six games. I don't know if we can now. Fuller's a pretty respected be. corner. He's, Come he's, on, he's, seventh best cakes. He, on the well, team, look, there's a reason the Skins gave him ten million per year. Yeah, they Ryan, what, him. What are your thoughts on that, Ryan? Uh, I, you know, it makes me feel good that I was just talking about the defensive line because they dominated the top ten. I, I will yeah, say right, that. but right. I was I was also wondering where Dwayne Haskins was going to be, and that yeah, so that that's the problem. I mean, you can have the best defense in the world if you don't have a quarterback, you're not going to go very far year in year out. You might win a playoff game one year, but then the next year, if your quarterback is still terrible. That's the issue. So, obviously, this all comes down to Dwayne Haskins. Uh, some of you, your buddy Chad Dukes last week, and he mentioned that Dwayne's trimming up, so maybe things yeah. going in the right direction. And I think that's actually good. Chad was like, does that matter? I said, yeah, it sort of matters. When you're 22 and you give someone $20 million or whatever his contract was, I know what I would be doing. It wouldn't be working out. So, <laughs> yeah. the fact that he, he's, he's focused after last year having his ups and downs, that's a, something you check off the checklist. So, yeah, he's doing that. But he clearly has to play well. And if we're in a situation um, that this team does win fewer than six games, they're going to be talking about a quarterback again. So, Dwayne, this is make or break year for Dwayne, fairly or not. And um, hopefully, you know, he's doing all the things he's supposed to be doing to, to make that happen. But it is concerning that your franchise quarterback is only your seven best players. Yeah. Speaking of franchise quarterbacks, any movement between Dallas and Dak Prescott, or do you, is he likely to play this year under the franchise tag? I think they, they, both sides wanted to get a deal done. Last I heard, um, Dallas wanted more years, Dak wanted fewer years. Um, I can't imagine they go through the season without a contract. That would be lunacy on the part of the Cowboys who've dragged their feet on this so long. If they do franchise them, Patrick Mahomes signs a deal, the Cowboys just cost himself another probably five, ten, fifteen million million based on what Mahomes' deal is going to be. I would have signed Dak last offseason, saved myself a few million on a year on, on the deal. But, you know, here we are. So they can franchise and roll with that, but it's, it's just going to get more and more expensive, and I don't think they have a backup plan in terms of what quarterback plan B is going to be. Right. If I'm like, just throwing out all the younger quarterbacks, and I'm, include, I'm not going to include Burrow and the guys that were drafted this year, too many unknowns, but the guys who were rookies last year, the Kyler Murrays, the Daniel Jones, uh, you know, the Haskins, and then I'm going to include the 2018 draft, the Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. So – Let's just you know the second and third year quarterbacks. All right, just kind of group them all together. Who's got the highest ceiling in your opinion? Is it Kyler Murray? Is it Mayfield? Or you know, is it one of the guys from from this year? What do you think? Uh, I think Kyler Murray is going to be fun to watch. I think Baker Mayfield needs to have a back bounce back year, but you just never know with that organization which way they're going. I'm going to give you throw you a curveball. I, and I liked him before the ESPN list came out the other day, which sort of blew up my plan. I like mm-hmm. Drew Locke. In the in the in the Broncos offense, that offense is stacked with players. Mm-hmm. The the offensive line actually got a little better. They have some concerns with left tackle, but in terms of playmakers, they got Cortland Sutton. Uh, they, they got Jerry Judy who they drafted. They have Noah Fant last year's first round pick. They have Phil Lindsay and Melvin Gordon. So it goes on and on and on. The defense actually isn't bad either. The issue is they play the Chiefs twice a year. But I think that Drew Locke has a chance to be really good in that offense, where it's not have to do a bunch. Where some of these other teams, Daniel Jones for example, has to take on a huge. A uh, much bigger uh, load on his shoulders. I-, I think Drew Locke could have a good year. Now I forgot to mention Lamar Jackson because he was in that draft from eighteen. Yes. <laughs> now he did win the MVP, but you just kind of assume he's going to be really good. Yeah. So uh, you know, okay. all all those yeah. other guys. So you, so you like Locke? Okay, all right. 
Yeah, yeah. No disrespect to Lamar Jackson. He was doing fine on his own. Yeah. Hmm. All right, Ryan, appreciate the time and insight. That's Ryan Wilson. You can check him out at CBSSports.com. Thanks, pal. Stay cool today, buddy. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, appreciate Thanks, it, Ryan. man. Yeah.